Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bone show. We're so thrilled to have back on the show uh, the incredible duo. If you haven't heard them or seen them live, you need to. We've got Rob Ikes and Trey Hensley. Thanks for coming back on the show, guys. <laughs> Good to be here, Eric. Yeah, man, great to see I you. I can't believe it's been a few years, like three years since the last album. That's crazy. And you guys uh, have slowed down a lot, it seems like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's funny because, you know, this record kind of came together while we did slow down over COVID, right, you know. Right. And uh, we just kind of focused on our songwriting and to write songs specifically for this album. And um, there it is. You know what, it's such an incredible album. I know I was talking with you guys earlier about it, but with living in a song, um, you know, there's so many, it really going back traditional, but also a lot of story songs. Like I was listening, you know, you guys do such a great job and, and working with your award-winning producer, never a bad thing, but living in a song, you can, you can really see the images and the stories coming through these songs. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, I love the title cut, and that's one that, it's funny, because when you just listen to the title, you think, oh, cool, living in a song. <laughs> and the song is actually kind of... <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's not like a rock ballad. Yeah, it's, it's like, a, we're living in a song. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, we're living in a song. <laughs> it's about the road, but it's about persevering even right. after, you know, some hard times on the road. Yeah. Um, but I love the title, and, and it's a perfect album title, because the song... The record is about, you know, all these songs, but I wanted to mention another one, The Backstreet's Off-Broadway, right. because that's one of my favorites. You talk about story my, songs. Oh, yeah. And it's, it tells the story of somebody who came here to Nashville to, you know, rock the world and maybe didn't rock the world quite as much as he thought he was going to. It's like you're looking at me and you're telling my story <laughs> right now. It's like, hey, you're rocking I'm, the world. I'm living this you're album, right. you know? <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's, that's, that's one of my favorites that was written by Trey and, and a friend of ours from East Tennessee. But, um, yeah. So many of the songs feel that way, though. You know, even what, what is incredible to me with both you guys and, and keeping up with you and, and just loving all your music and all the things, you know, everybody else's albums that you both play on as well. But you're both incredible musicians, you know, with dobro, guitar, everything you do, but also vocalist. So what I enjoyed on this one especially is not only the harmonies, but switching off lead. Mm -hmm. It's not, like not a lot of duos get to do that. And, and when you guys take the time, and also, like I was kidding you about, you know, like we were talking about, you know, back streets off Broadway, way downtown. I thought it was great the way that the uh, engineer sped up the tape. <laughs> yeah. You know, because if, if I didn't know better, I would think that, wow, you guys were really playing fast on this song. That's one where, where, you know, when you play live, you often play stuff faster than you do normally. But I think that one's faster on, yeah. on the record than it is when we play it live. I don't know if we could play it faster than that was, uh was that first take? That, that one? was, we and were excited. Uh, I think Brent had just got a new espresso machine. Ah, right you that. Hit that. So, and I think I think I hit that pretty hard <laughs> that morning. You may have to have an endorsement deal with a traveling <laughs> one on the tour this year. That's you know? right. I think that's you know we, that probably is the case on that. But it sounds so good, and and you know I think what comes through every time you guys do music, and I know the same thing when you play live, is you guys are having fun, and you're just playing off each other, and you're both fun, talented guys. There's, there's something, you know, like we play on a lot of other people's records and, and in Nashville, and that's great, and we love doing that, um, but sometimes sessions can be so, they squash the fun out of it, right. you know, because they want it so perfect. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, play here, don't play here, do this, that. And when we do our records, it's definitely, we try to make it more like a jam session, like yes. try not to even have charts, try to just, you know, mm -hmm. run the song, use your ears and, and not your eyes, you right. know? Yeah. And, and don't think about it. I, I hate thinking about it. So, you yeah. know, we can do that. We can read charts and mm -hmm. play on other people's records. But I think on our records, we try to make it more like a jam session and, and really have fun and just try to create some kind of vibe there in the studio. It reminds yeah. me of the, the traditional, the older Nashville days. You know, like when Chet Atkins and all these great players were around. So when I hear you guys and see you guys, and once again, you know, the Opry reaching out, inviting you guys back on the stage, which is incredible. But it's like, it's just, you're having fun. You're doing what you love. You know, just like we were talking about before we came in studio about the collaborations and everything and working with Tommy Emanuel and all these great people and tribute albums. But what an incredible deal to where you guys can still do your own albums together and do what you want. I know you started out with 30 songs on this and had to shave it down to 12. Yeah, it was, uh, 
You know, I think we had a few that were kind of left over from maybe the last record that we'd written, but most of them were written, you know, from probably the beginnings of 2020 until we started <laughs> recording. I mean, we wrote, you know, several times a week, I think, through Zoom and, and whatever, you know, yeah. And, and so, yeah, we went into this with, with that many songs and, you know, luckily Brent, we were, I remember the first day that we did the pre-production, you know, we recorded like 24 of those oh, 30 right. songs. Yeah, just the two of us. And, yeah. uh, and then met up the next week and, and narrowed it down to, you know, the 12 that are on the record. Right. But yeah, I mean, that was a first for us, I think was, uh, you know, the last record we wrote a lot on it, yeah. but we really wrote a lot for, for this one. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I got to give a shout out to our producer, Brent Mayer, because he's just such such a great guy and such a master, you know. Yeah, I hope he makes it. I mean, I think he's got potential. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, he's already made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah good, good guy to have on your team. But the nice yeah. thing is that he's already made it, but he, he's super cool. You right. know what I mean? Like, and he's been, he's really taken us under his wing, and especially with the songwriting, because you know, I mean, we've done some, but. Uh, He's really, just to work with him, kind of see how it's done. And, yeah. and of course, he's worked with, you know, Harlan Howard and, and wrote with all these great people yeah. over the years, according all the success he had with the Judds oh and, and other artists, you know, and Willie Nelson and Merle right. Haggard. I mean, he's just worked with everybody. So, and when we did our first record with him, you know, when, you know, he was mixing, I, I told Trey later that day, it's just a good feeling to have somebody who's had that much success right. driving your car, you yes. know, and you just sort of kick back <laughs> yeah. and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, and you know you're in good hands, you know. It's yeah. Right. And I'm, I think the one of the first times we wrote with him, you know, and it is really just like, you know, learning from somebody that's a master at, right. at a craft, you Definitely. know, and he's he's just so, you know, it just seems like every everything musically just kind of flows from Brent, and mm -hmm. it feel, I feel like it makes us, play better and sing better and write better to, to get to work with him. So yeah, right. it's been great. He's such a professional. And I think and what hit me in the face as soon as I listened to the first track on here is just, you know, what a great job of the mixing. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I can hear I can hear the strings uh, under your guys' fingers. I can hear the voices, everything. There's just separation and clarity and it seems like everything's at the perfect level. Well I'll yeah. tell you, you know, when you know, we've done a lot of records and, and mixing. I love it, you know, it's, but it's exhausting. Just listening that closely all day long. And, and but I, I usually can beat <laughs> the, any engineer, I can outlast them. But, but Brent and Charles, his engineer, those guys work so hard. Yeah. And I, they go, they go from farther than I can go, you know. And it's just nice because they'll, They'll, they'll hit it and work on it all day, yeah. and then you come back in the next day, and, and you, you, everybody's got some idea. And maybe this needs to come yeah. up a little bit, mm -hmm. or this, try this. And it's no big deal. So that's part of the process, you right. know. And, and it's just, it just accept, yeah, man, that's, it, you know, you're, you just keep working on it, you know. Yeah. And so that's kind of been a nice, a nice yeah. kind of eye-opener for me, working yeah. with those guys. Well, and crafting it. I think that, you know, people, you know, at that level of Brent, you know, to where they're just such professionals, and it's having that outside input. You guys are incredible musicians and, and in your own right, but having somebody like that work with you, it just raises the bar on everything. Yeah, it, it, it does. does. It, it takes pressure off us and lets us just focus on the performance right. more and not worry about microphones. Just like performance, or, you know, on, a, on like a TikTok dance that'll be coming out. Because <laughs> <That's right. laughs> exactly. I know that Trey is going to be adding yeah. TikTok and you will right. be too, Rob. Trey, so, his <laughs> middle name is TikTok. So that we can have the dances that go with this album per song. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. I'm excited to see that. Yeah. I think your daughter can help you with that. Yeah, I think so. You know, there's, She's got to be some answer. room. Yeah, there's got to be some room on there. Well, you know, we were talking about it too. It's like, I love this, uh, the vintage photo on the front of the album, but also this great picture of you guys on the back <laughs> with this, uh, you know, nice little harmony guitar you're holding. Yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, I love that guitar. I picked that one up at Fanny's House of Music here in Nashville, and uh, I was just driving down the road, and, and they had one in the window. I hate when old, they do that. Yeah, it was like an old <laughs> harmony that had um, metal sides on it, like, a, like you'd see on a diner. Yeah. You know? And so that got me in there, and then I bought that. <laughs> literally, yeah, 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 literally, literally, I saw it, and I had no intention. Uh, it was like musician it. bait. Yeah, uh, I was like, okay. And you're like, oh, wait, there's a guitar that has more pick guards than most That's of my That's right, <laughs> exactly. It's got, yeah. 
you know. When you play as good as this guy, you need all the pit guards. Yeah, you know, I feel like I could hand him like anything. It's oh, like, you know, you it's could. like I hand him my Telstar here, like, here you go. Yeah. He goes, what are you doing to that thing? Well, you know, and both you guys, obviously, you know, playing for so many years, you know, you've been with Martin for a long time. Yeah. And, and continue to, you know, play some of their great guitars on yeah. the road in the studio. Any favorite ones right now? Yeah, actually, uh, you know, I've been playing a D41, just a standard D41. Love those. That, uh, yeah, I, I yeah, love it, killer. man. It sounds so great. I heard there's and a new model you're interested in. Yeah, these new Super Ds. I just played one at the showroom and at Gruen's, and they're pretty amazing. Man. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, I played those it's, in, in Rosewood and Koa. I know. It's amazing <laughs> that, you know, they're just, it seems like they always up the bar. You yeah. know, it's like every time you play one, they're just continually building really great, stuff that you can just go into a music store and, and get you know it's I, I just got a d18 standard last year too that's right. like you know it just blows me away how good it is you know yeah. so it's like well you're not helping me yeah <laughs> you yeah cause you i know because we were just talking about that it's like oh, you know, i'm looking at a d18 but yeah. you know, i was going to bring up also rob this to where you got a new guitar I do, Besides yeah. Besides all of your Dobros and everything, you needed one more guitar. <laughs> yes, you always need one more. You know that. Obviously. You, you, you had the same problem, yeah, I, right? Yeah, I have an issue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I hooked up with this uh, newer builder of resonator guitars named Burl Murdoch, B-Y-R-L. And uh, one of my students had one of his guitars I was teaching at a camp a few years ago. And, uh, you know, I could just tell, you know, she, she was kind of a beginner mm -hmm. and was learning how to play, but I could tell that was a killer guitar. So after the second day, I said, hey, uh, can I try that guitar? <laughs> she said, yes, of course. So I played it and it was one of the best Dobros I'd ever played, you know. And so she put me in touch with him. We met at the IBMA convention a few yeah. weeks later. Yeah, I heard you got a few wars from there sometimes. Yeah, well, I've, I've had a few over yeah, the years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's counting? But, you know, he, and he had a booth there, so he brought everything and I played everything and I was really impressed. Very consistent builder. Lots of different woods, you know, wow. cool, like Koa. We were talking right. about Koa. And he's got these churchwood guitars. There was an old church out in the country where he lives. Oh my and he got some of the pieces, you know, from that building as it was kind of falling apart, I guess. And uh, what's another one? Monkey Pod, which I'd never <laughs> heard of that wood. And it's actually an I think invasive. That was a big deal last year. It's right? an invasive. I think they're street. making up wood now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Trey. It, it's an invasive species in Hawaii, um, and uh, but man, that was a killer guitar. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I'm doing a signature model with him now. Congratulations. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's hard rock maple. He does a beautiful fretboard where he does this nice curved inlay thing. Um, but uh, it's probably, is it on there? It's inside probably, but, is it? Um, but yeah, so one. that's been nice. That's kind of a new thing oh, for me. Oh, so Maybe many. Nice. In there, but, oh, it's um, incredible. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, Burl Guitars, yeah. Well, you know, and I was going to bring up too, not to embarrass you, but you know, you're playing on some recent uh, tracks with a popular country music artist, Willie Nelson. Yes, just yesterday we were in the studio and Willie's doing a bluegrass album. And uh, so Who else can he call? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. Well, it's funny, a friend of mine, Aubrey Haney, was playing fiddle and he's, he's one of the main session guys in town. And we were both, we were just kind of smiling because we got to play on Merle Haggard's Bluegrass album a few years ago. So now, just nice to check both those boxes, wow. you know. Um, but yeah, it was it was a fun day. We had a great time. And I, I don't know how you guys find time for it between, you know, writing songs, doing new albums, touring, Grand Ole Opry calls up, wants you on all the time. You're playing <laughs> festivals. It's a you lot. You got some big festivals <laughs> coming up this year. TikTok dances. The tick, tick that can take thing. up all your time That's right there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this guy, he is the master of Instagram. I tell you, man, he he's got a great a great page on Instagram. I, I do. I follow him. It's yeah. like and it kills me too. I love it. I love it. He keeps you entertained and he's got a I think it's going to translate well to TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where you when, come in. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Just wait till the outfits get here. Yeah, <laughs> that is so awesome. But I mean, you guys got so much going on, especially with all the shows coming up this year. Yeah. How yeah. do you keep it all managed? Well, it's funny. Last year, you know, I think we didn't know it was going to be as busy as it was when it first started because yeah. things were still sort of kicking in. Right. And honestly, last October is when it started. Yeah. And then we ended up doing about two weeks with Taj Mahal in his band. I, you wow. Know. Yeah, and the we, Taj Mahal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we did another run most of March. Yeah, we were gone with March. Taj. Yeah. And so that was like amazing. And he's he's just become a great friend. And, and of course, we've been hero. He's been our hero for a long oh, time. My gosh. 
And um, and then yeah, we were in you know we did the Edmonton Folk Festival this yeah. summer, and um, and then we did the Earl Scruggs Festival this fall, and we've been all over the place. Well, you got you have Merle Fest coming up this year. Yeah, yeah we'll be right. at Merle Fest in April, and then we're doing Pagosa Springs, which is a great festival in Southern Colorado. Um, and we got a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, we'll be in the Northeast right in February. That's right. Yeah, a lot of out. cool stuff. I know we're doing New York City and uh, Philadelphia and. All those places, you know. New and York City. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Well, you know, what I brought up too. It's like you guys are going to have some videos coming out with this too. The label's going to be putting out some new videos with you guys. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so that's, that's where that's the great. fancy outfits will come. That's in. right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and also the new boots. That's right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I didn't get the boot memo before you guys came in. I was, you know, I was, I was dressed nice, but next time I'll do the boots. Okay. Right. Yeah, I promise. Okay. That'd, be That'd be yes. great. That'd be great. You know, but so many great things. I mean, and what an awesome album. You know, with living in a song you know it's like I, I just feel like you know every one of them is just honest mm. every one of the songs on here and I enjoy the one song I can't remember the track now to where you guys are like counting it off I feel like I'm sitting <laughs> in the studio with you oh yeah, yeah yeah and it's like you count it off and then you go into it yeah and it just all feels natural yeah I mean you know that was when we worked with Brent I mean our, all of our records at this point we've we've done them live in the studio very minimal overdubs if if not zero overdubs right. um, and for this one was was all the same, you know. We we did full takes, you know. It was all, you know, no no overdub vocals, no overdub anything. Wow. And so it was. I think a lot of our favorite records were recorded that way. Mm -hmm. And so when we when we go into the studio, we kind of bring that along with us. And and you know, it helps to have a great producer like Brent who can Definitely. sort everything out and and. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of these, the, the tracks on here, yeah, you're, you're just hearing what went down. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it feels live. I mean, yeah. only slower than it will be when you play it live. <laughs> That's right. Brought to you by Espresso. <laughs> That's right. There's, there's, a, there's a joke, studio joke, you know, how do you produce Trey Hensley? <laughs> Put a mic in front of them. <laughs> you know, you don't have to press right. any buttons or do any yeah. magic or, you know, it's, it comes out perfect. Which yeah, is I've been nice. trying to figure out that slow down button on Instagram. Yeah. Stuff. You know, really, I'm like going, wow, my Instagram will not, I can't slow mo it to get your licks down. And so I don't, just something to bring up to the company right. yeah. Yeah, to help me That's, and other players. Yes, yes, That's a good idea. <laughs> I'm sure they'll do you it. Know, remember what you could do with vinyl? That's yeah. right. You could slow it down. You know, put a couple nickels on it. Yeah. yeah so, but I, I'll tell you what, I know the you've got the uh, CDs and vinyl available, and then also uh, the full album streaming. You know, big tour coming up this year, which is amazing. It's like, uh, I th yeah, I hate to say this. I mean, I hate to raise the bar again, but I think this is your best album to date. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So you're going to have to like do like a Pat Boone thing on the next one and do metal. <laughs> That's right. Bluegrass metal. Oh, it's already half uh, done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there's just so many awesome songs on here. And I'll tell you what, you know, our viewers are going to want to have, I like having the vinyl in my hand, you know, so you can actually, you know, look at the pictures and look at the, everybody involved with it. But living in a song, um, great album. Congratulations, guys. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, and Eric. Uh, so many awesome singles on here that uh, I think a lot of traditional country people are really going to gravitate towards this also. Yeah, for sure. You know, to where, and, and it's nice to see that coming back around and you guys can do what you want musically. Yeah, yeah. And so I want to make sure for our viewers, for a website, for social media, for TikTok, for everything <laughs> that they need for you guys, where do they go? Uh, yeah, robintray.com. And uh, I think all of our socials are, you know, backslash Rob and Trey. Uh, we each have individual Instagrams and Facebooks and all that. And uh, But yeah, most everything you can find us at Rob and Trey. And, and back on the Opry and everywhere yeah, else. You'll be right. in Merle Fest and you name it. And playing on other people's albums when you're not doing your own <laughs> great albums <laughs> as a duo. Uh, you guys are on fire. Hey, thank you Thanks very so much. much. Appreciate Rob it. and Trey, so great to have you on the show. Be sure, get your own copy, get it on vinyl. This is Living in a Song. Uh, you're going to love it as much as I do. But also, go out and see these guys live, uh, not just on social media and all that. You've got to see them live and in person. They're even better. Thanks for coming on, guys. Thanks, Thanks Eric. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bones Show.